Back in 2014, the then president of the Board of Trustees, Dr. Joel Siegel, had as a goal for us to reconnect and re-engage our alumni. We were at a meeting and he asked for a volunteer to be alumni coordinator. I raised my hand even though I'm not an alumna of the school, but I was very intrigued at the thought of being able to reconnect with all the amazing young people that we've known in the 40 years that we've been involved with the school. While tonight it is ter certainly fitting and proper for us to honor seven alumni who chose to live here in this city and who chose to spend their time building our school and our community, we should not forget that our alumni are building communities all over the world. The branches of a tree are its beauty, and this, their strength is in the roots. While our alumni, have with, armed with the roots, the strength and the roots that they received here, are branching out and spreading beauty all over the world. Tonight, we salute all of our alumni. Being part of the MHA 72 year history feels cool because well, my mom and dad went here and now we go here. And they played in the same gym as us. When students see that their grandparents are invested in their education and that their parents are invested in their education and they have stories about their great grandparents investing in their education here, they know they have a home and they know that the home is important. Well, this is our 37th year at the school. Um, the last couple of years that I taught, I was teaching the children of the students I had when I first came in 1985. That's a powerful, powerful thing. It's just inspirational to see how many people have come through this school um, and really what they've accomplished based on everything they learned and the role models they saw at this school growing up. The school has been the forefront of everything we do here in the community. The alumni provide a, a very important benchmark for the school in understanding its quality. The MHA has such deep roots. It really starts from the excellence of the teachers and the administrators that have truly um, been the backbone of the school. First, let me mention when um, my wife, Elena, as president uh, two years ago, mentioned this idea of having a banquet where we honored 70 uh, years of history and pick uh, a member of each decade to honor. I said, God, that seems unwieldy and you know, what, a, what an ambitious idea. But the more I thought about it, what a perfect way to celebrate a long history, honoring across seven decades, all the people that are being featured are individuals who still breathe and live the welfare of this institution of the of the Margolin Eber Academy. We go back and we start with Lester Litt. So uh, my father was a graduate. He was actually in the first graduating class. My parents, along with the Marglins and Kuttners and Epsteins and that bunch, they formulated the school. I also attended school here. And here we are 75 years later and it's still going strong. I think that it is incredible to see the way the Hebrew Academy is able to um, strengthen the Jewish community. Well, I feel a personal pride just because I'm, I'm participated in it. But really I feel more pride for the founders, the people who, who had the, the guts and the gamble, you know, to, to take this risk. I think back to my time in school here, one of my favorite memories is walking through the hallway that I actually just walked down, and they used to have the pictures of all the graduating classes, and I used to love to walk down the hall and, and look over and see the picture of my dad in his graduating class. In our graduating class, there were only three boys. Me and Herbie Lansky and Brooksy Gold, we were the graduating class. So my dad is, is very dedicated to the Jewish community of Memphis. Be fruitful and multiply. 
And I'd like for that to be my prayer to you, that you still keep this institution financially viable, so much so that you don't ever have to turn away a Jewish student because of lack of funds. And I want you to multiply not only the number of students, but I want the students to be so, the number of students to multiply so much that we'll have to tear down this building and build another one to house all the students that we have. We've done some great things for the community, and it really was, I, I believe, just based from this education that you received. So I would tell them that I'm proud of them. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. What can I say? So much to say about my father. He is an exceptional, amazing human being who has learned his Jewish education starting from the MHA, and it has grown and become part of our family. When thinking about the MHA, the memory that brings a smile to my face is remembering Rabbi Belsky's footprints at the front of the base medrash where Rabbi Belsky had uh, worn down the floor. I think about the amount of time and energy spent davening and learning from that one spot and the powerful impression that he made on our family and community. My father pointed the footprints out to me when I was younger and I would always look at those when I was at the yeshiva. In terms of community impact, my siblings and I were raised in Memphis, Tennessee in a home that was 100% Torah 100% of the time. And over the years I've watched and eavesdropped on my father giving guidance to many in the community who had halachic shailas, crisis of conscience, or just needed an ear. Uh, it's hard to do those things even in the larger Jewish populations. The will to do that is in my parents' DNA, but the ability to do that came from the yeshiva, um, for which my family is truly grateful. Mike Stein, I grew up in, with him as a fixture in the base medrash. I was born and raised in Memphis. I started here in kindergarten, and I finished in 12th grade, and I spent the majority of my younger years uh, in the Yeshiva of the South. What Mike was doing at the time and his commitment to the school and the time that he spent again, then he was already in the workforce, made an impression. So there was a slogan in the old days, I can say the old days, you know, I, I've earned that part, that the academy is a great institution because it represents a great idea. So that great idea is living a life of Torah. I'm extremely proud of Michael and Essie and their family for carrying on the traditions of the teachings of the day school, of the academy and of the high school. Because I have to say the story about my eighth grade Rebbe, my eighth grade teacher was Rabbi Elio Hartman, who was a principal of the school, but he, I knew him when he was in the eighth grade, who was my teacher. Until today, I still speak to him. I still consider him one of my Rebbe's, one of my teachers, and he had such an influence on my life that I have to have what's called Hakar Satob, gratitude toward him, and I told him so, because I don't take for granted anything that was ever done from the people that came before. Mike fights tenaciously for ideas he believes in, always under the framework that this has to be the one orthodox, authentic Torah school for our community. I think it's very exciting that my grandchildren are following in the footsteps. One Shabbos, I was walking to shul. When I walked by Mike's house, I was walking to the Baron Hirsch. Mike saw me outside. He saw that I was having a hard time walking. He calls me in his house, gives me a set of galoshes, and it just showed what a person he is. Michael is a great teacher, a very successful businessman, and is known throughout our Orthodox community as someone who is considered a scholar. And so his entire life has been one of being a role model and an example to others and to the, even to the kids in the school 
um, of what it's like to be a professional person and also be able to give back to the community and show that you can be professional and can also be a religious Jew in this day and age. He never lost sight of that Jewish education that the MHA has given him. And he has learned to give back from the MHA and to bring that into his everyday life. And that's really my, my blessing, my bracha for the school, is that they emphasize to thank the people who built the place who gave their life, who self-sacrificed for the academy. And we're just continuing on what they have done, and we want to continue on for our children and grandchildren. Mazel tov, Dad. We all love you, and we're all so proud of you. Yeah, mazel tov to Mike and Essie. I think you've done uh, in incredible work as role models, as ambassadors for the school. You're definitely deserving of this honor for all of the contributions and things that you've done for the community. Mazel tov to my parents and to all the honorees and wishing the, wishing the community much atzlacha. go to the next decade and you've got uh, Lee Bomb, you know, maybe one of my favorite bombs, and that's hard to choose a favorite bomb. One of my favorite quotes is from Bobby Kennedy. When he was on the campaign trail, he once said, some men see things as they are and ask why. I see them as I dream them and ask why not. I don't think any phrase encapsulates what Lee Baum has done for our school more than that one. So my dad, growing up, um, was always extremely involved. Uh, Lee is the most adorable, funny person in the whole world. I always say, you should have been a stand-up comic. Besides Lee's amazing Elvis impression. All right, everybody. How's everybody doing out there tonight? His contribution to the school, besides as a student, besides as being a, uh, an alumni we can be proud of, is he is always willing to provide sweat equity. I came here, I guess, in sixth grade. I'd been through um, public school all the way through fifth, but now, you know, my kids went and they taught us a lot of things we didn't know. Of course, my wife also, when we got married, she had been here all the way through, so she started you know, from kindergarten on, she went all the way through, so. It's fabulous to see, again, the dedication of a graduate of the school who comes back to give and, and to make sure that the things that are done are done well. Whether it was being a basketball coach and being on the board at the JCC, being on the board at Baron Hirsch, um, at MHA, always, you know, being involved in some aspect of what was going on, either as a parent volunteer or working on something around the building. Um, he really set such a wonderful example uh, for me and my siblings. I don't think there are words that can measure the impact that Lee's help, support, guidance, wisdom has had on constructing a school that really exemplifies in its building and in its ambiance, the beauty and wonderful significance of everything going on inside. Mom and I are very proud of Lee and what he has done at the school and how he has just assumed a role over there and done some unbelievable things that will be with the school and will make it a better place to be for the students and for the teachers and everyone involved over there. And uh, I'm just so proud of everything that he's done and just happy to see him so excited. I know it's a labor of love for him and uh, I wish him nothing but the best from here on out. Hey, if you ask me, our mission really is to provide a Torah and excellent general studies education to every possible interested Jewish person in Memphis. And they made that possible for a number of boys and girls where otherwise would have been impossible. And you're talking about opening up your home and having them come in for years, right? And now then, in some cases, it's, it's, it's a lifetime. 
and that is just remarkable. And I think that they are role models to everyone as to what it means to really be a child of Avraham Avinu. I think really all the work that he's done has turned the, the physical structure into a beautiful space that we can be so proud of. I know how important the school is to the whole community. Whatever we can do, whether it's the gym or the Beit Midrash or the new STEAM Center that's going to be awesome, by the way. We just got to keep it growing so that people will keep coming and we know how important it is for a community to have the school. In addition to all the amazing things that he's done for the school and the community, um, the thing that I'm most proud of my dad about is really just who he is as a person. I, I feel honored. I'm humbled, you know. I just try and help out when I can. and. Uh, like I said, I want the school to grow and be better, and I just try and do my part, as we all should, you know, in the community, to do whatever we can to make sure that this school is successful and for many years to come. I can only strive to be a person like you. You're so loyal, kind, fun, funny, supportive, everything good I could say about a person, and anyone who knows you or meets you immediately sees that and loves you. We love you very, very much, and Mazel Tov, we're so happy and proud of you. Mazel Tov, Dad, I love you so much, and you're the best, and there's really no one more deserving of this honor than you. The next decade, uh... You've got uh, Sandra Ozdova, who her presence uh, makes uh, a really big difference here. My mom really gives her heart and soul to the MHA and to the Memphis community as a whole. She's the most friendly, outgoing, and caring person I know, which makes her that much more special and makes her that much more deserving of this honor. She takes care of everybody, her motherly instincts and her kindnesses towards everybody are felt throughout the school building every day. She genuinely cares about every single person that she comes in contact with. Sandra and I both have been in school since kindergarten. Hi mom, mazel tov, and congratulations to all the honorees. First of all, thank you for teaching me how to cook, how to be creative, how to adapt, and how to feed the soul. And I really love that she is such an important part to the kids as a just someone who they talk to and they trust and she's in the building that we were in together since we were five. So I started at kindergarten and I went to school all the way through 12th grade. Uh, graduated in 1980, moved away, came back, started my own family. All five of my kids went here. They've all graduated and now I work here. I've been working here for quite a long time. Um, maybe 13 years, I lost track of time. <laughs> she really just fills our hearts and our stomachs every day. And I just love the kids completely. They're just, um, they make my day great. I think many of your recipes are not written down because there is no measurement for the amount of love you put into your food. The thing you've taught me the most is how to bring people together through the power of food, and that is something that I carry with me every single day. Whether a kid needs ice, they need to, someone to speak to, they need extra food, they're not doing well. I know she'd always be there to help out, um, as she did the same for me and the rest of my siblings. We're so proud of you, Mazel Tov, on this incredible accomplishment. Even though we're not local in Memphis anymore, I always get calls and texts and your name just spreads around because you're a mother figure to everybody in the community, in the school. I really don't like the recognition. I like being in the background. <laughs> I'd just like to let you know how proud of you I am and how well deserved this honor really is. I honestly can't even thank you enough for all the amazing things you've done for me up until this point. And I'm looking forward to all the amazing memories we'll build in the future. You're truly an inspiration to me and I know I can speak for many others. I love you so much and I'm so happy I can be with you here tonight on this special night. Mom, you're the most selfless woman I've ever met and to be able to honor you tonight is something so special because you don't hear it enough. Um, you really, really deserve this honor. I hope that I could be half of the woman that you are um, and I really love you so much. I am so, so proud of you. You deserve this more than anyone I know um, and I love you. Mazel tov. And so I love you, the entire community loves you, and I'm just so proud of you for being honored tonight. And 
on behalf of me and everyone, we just love you so much and I'm so proud of you. You truly are the most deserving. You are a pillar in the community. You feed everyone, you take care of everyone. You are everyone's best friend and confidant. And there is no one, truly no one, more deserving than you for this award. Thank you for your years of commitment to the MHA and being everyone's mom or best friend. Love you. Mazatov. My blessing for, to the school and for the school is that it should have many more years of um, happy children and growth um, and success. It's, it's wonderful to be appreciated. Um, and I really do love everybody here, so it's, it's a great feeling. As we turn to that next decade, we have Amara Levine Reich, and Amara really um, did her parents proud as a, as a student and alum here. Steve Jobs once said, here's to the crazy people, they're the ones who change things. Only Amara Levine Reich would volunteer to produce and edit an alumni newsletter with no staff and no budget. Amara and I were in elementary school together at MHA. I have very distinct memories of us playing together at recess on the MHA playground. I went to MHA from the time I was four and through 12th grade. I would say I got an excellent um, both general studies and Judaic studies education. Um, and that obviously set me up for success in, in my post high school um, educational endeavors, in my career. Um, it also instilled in me a love of and pride for Judaism and Jewish learning um, and prepared me for, for establishing a Jewish family and, and raising my son um, in the same traditions. I had many good students, but Mara really stuck out as really a very smart student, someone who I enjoyed teaching. Uh, one of the big contributions that she made, which was so important, was she uh, standardized for the community um, our meal trains. It would not be an overstatement to say that there would be no alumni newsletter without Amara. And it's been that newsletter that has enabled us to engage all the many alumni from the past 70 years. Uh, well, with each issue that we do, um, I'm continually more impressed um, with with the far-reaching impact of the school. It's been a unique opportunity for me to kind of get, you know get to see the the spectrum of our graduates and and how the school has made an indelible impact on them. She is a humble genius. She even skipped a grade while at MHA. You want her on your trivia team or your escape room team. Um, she has also somehow managed to pack a ton of MHA history and Memphis Jewish community history, for that matter, into her brain. If there was ever going to be an MHA book written, we want Amara to write it. She knows all the things. Her talents and her skills as an editor and a writer are far beyond any that I've known from anyone I've ever met. But what also I think really was unique about Amara was with all her knowledge and her being an excellent student, her tzniut, her modesty. I would just, I would wish the school many more successful years uh, of educating students at the highest level, both in general studies and in Judaic studies and, and inspiring current and, and future generations uh, to give back um, both to the Jewish community and to the world at large at the highest level possible. Amara, rhymes with Sarah, you're welcome. Um, is wonderful and thoughtful and a truly supportive friend, and she is so well deserving of this honor. Amara, on behalf of myself and all of the alumni and our whole community, I really want to say thank you. It, it's very nice to be recognized. Um, it, it, I'm not a person who generally chases after the limelight, um, so I was kind of surprised. Um, but it, you know, it, it's always nice to to be recognized. Um, I mean, I, I do spend a lot of, of time and put a lot of effort into the newsletter. It's it's a labor of love, um, so it's nice to to have that that recognized. As, as we go to the next decade, uh, we're getting into more recent times, uh, the last uh, 20 years, the last 15 years. We're honoring uh, Richard Lewis, who has really covered a gamut of service here. 
Now it's true, we all have memories as Richard having, you know, the, the, the greatest shot on the basketball court, all right? Well, I'm not going to say he was the best player ever because I don't want to have the banquet uh, erupt into a series of fights over who was the best player that we ever had. I think the biggest heroes in the MHA FYOS story are the teachers. You know, the, the teachers that have been around for five, ten plus years are the ones that I think are the, the life the life beat of, of the school. He's just an incredible person. First of all, he's very, very community minded. He cares about our education and he wants to do whatever he can to help us learn. Yeah, so I started at the MHA in fourth grade and uh, graduated from eighth grade, then went to high school, graduated from twelfth grade and the MHA really was has been a part of my life since since fourth grade when I started there. Even after I graduated in 12th grade, I always felt like I had this connection to the school and always felt a need to kind of pay back some of the, um, the effort and blood and sweat and tears they put into me. And I still feel that responsibility. Congratulations to Richard and all the honorees this year. It was no surprise to hear that Richard was being honored. Uh, even early on, he helped keep the teachers on their toes and prepared for anything. Mazel tov Richard on this so well-deserved honor. I not only had the chance to be coached by Richard as a member of the Cooper Max, but also saw his active leadership in the Jewish community, whether it be through the Baron Hirsch or his involvement with the MHA. It's been just unbelievable as I've grown up through different stages to see Richard in different leadership roles. Um, he takes on so much for himself, for his family, but really for the community at large. And it's just, again, seeing that transition from seeing him as an unbelievable leader on the basketball floor to today, seeing him just, you know, in our friend group and at the community, always bringing everyone together. He does a lot of things. He is helping to find the new dean for the school. Now fast forward 10 more years, and Richard just led um, our search for a head of school, put his heart into that and uh, worked as, as hard as I've seen anybody work on a project, tried to leave no stone unturned and uh, did everything he could to fulfill the mandate. The MHA has been around for 75 plus years and not just been around, but thrived. And I think the school right now is at a really critical point with uh, a new head of school coming in, um, new students, new teachers. And so, you know, it's gonna be interesting over the next several years to, to watch the school. And, you know, I, I just hope it continues to maintain its, um, its place in our community, a place that's welcoming for all. I've watched as you've become a dedicated volunteer and leader in the community, and you've always been focused on how do I present our school and our community in the best light possible. It's weird, you know, I graduated from high school uh, 18, 19 years ago, and I still consider my classmates from that time to be my closest, dearest friends. This is a very quick, true story. Um, the day of a big basketball game, we had the Gamara exam, and Richard, sitting next to me, asked me something, nothing to do with the test, and I whispered back. The Rebbe saw us, told us we'd both get an F on the test, kicked us both out, and told us we weren't gonna be able to play in the game that night. We both got up, walked out, and went into the student lounge to hang out, uh, where we were talking about how it was unfair or crazy that we couldn't play in the game that night. A few minutes later, uh, the Rebbe came out of the classroom and handed Richard, handed Richard a note. Richard read it, smiled, and then unsmiled quickly and gave it back to the Rebbe. I was curious, I looked at Richard, Richard looked at me and gave me one of those famous like head nods and then walked away and wouldn't tell me what the note said. I was very curious about that note, so I followed the Rebbe on the off chance he would throw it out in the trash and I could get my hands on what it said. I got very lucky that the Rebbe threw it out without ripping it up and he didn't see me. I picked up the letter from the trash and this is exactly what it said and I still have a picture of the letter. Dear Richard, I had to kick you both out. I'm sure you understand it was for looks. You are the best. You will not get F. You will get A. Of course you need to play in the game tonight, or we won't win. After you read this letter, please put back in my hand and continue your day like you didn't read. Sincerely, Rabbi Blank. P.S. Make your three points worth shots tonight. Mazel tov, Richard, and the entire family. Mazel tov Richard for receiving this award. Uh, you should only go from strength to strength and receive awards from now and forever. Mazel tov Richard. I'm thrilled to be part of this chance to recognize you 
and the other distinguished alumni of the Marlin Hebrew Academy Fine Sunni Yeshiva of the South for your dedication and commitment to our school and our community. Richard, Mazel Tov on this well-deserved honor. You certainly deserve it. And I know that Dad and myself are very proud of you for everything you do for the city, uh, the school, the shul, and your family as well. Thank you for being you. I am a little bit embarrassed uh, to be uh, included in this group because I see some of the other names that are being honored. Um, and those people, to me, like, I look up to them. I'm proud of my dad because he is a good dad, and he, I'm proud of him because he helped, he helped our school by finding the new dean. Takes time off to play with us and take us to ice cream. We love you, Daddy. You are the best dad. I love you. And then our most recent decade is represented by someone that just graduated just under a decade ago, and that's Jamie Giver. I think Jamie is very deserving of this honor um, for the outreach she has done with these teenagers and beyond. She made a very big impact on my school. She's literally the reason why I'm on track right now. In my Judaism, in my life, what I'm doing next year in college. She is one of the hardest working people I know. She graduated top of her class at law school while having three kids at home all while running in CSY. She never complained once. Whenever I see her with her kids, I, there's no one, there's not a more chilled mother on this planet. She makes everything in life look so easy. She's an all around superstar. I think my experience is better at MHA, but I think also everyone, all the students experience it better as a whole as MHA, just because NCSY really out gives an opportunity for social events, social networking between kids who usually wouldn't. I remember um, in seventh grade, one of our teachers told us that we should become lawyers. I was in the MHA from first grade till 12th grade. Both my parents attended the MHA. My grandparents were involved in establishing the school, and it's been really meaningful to see you know, the legacy that my grandparents set out for their children kind of evolve and come true in ways that they probably didn't imagine. I see her making an impact with the kids even beyond high school. She is the NCSY director, right? So anytime we have trips out, right, she runs everything. She's always doing something. See someone like Jamie continuing that, that tradition, building on it, becoming a leader of NCSY, involving one of our, the younger graduates to become her assistant. So this is something that really gives us a lot of nachas. We, we, we feel very proud of her, and we hope to see her continue to do all these things while she's been in law school. So she's doing all this while she's shouldering a million other things, building a family. She gives the best hug. She really knows how to manage a team, but also she works 24-7 and never really stops. You make time for the things that are important for you, to you. I always tell my husband there's not enough hours in the day, but you, gotta, you find time. Someone that has figured out how to juggle all these jobs into the benefit of this community and to the benefit of this school. The way she relates to them, like a Jewish way and a personal way, is great. I see how comfortable the kids are with her. When it, when it talks about Jamie, how Jamie impacted my life and Jamie impacted the school, she cares so much about every single person. I still don't know how she does it, but it's inspiring to watch. I've watched women who had several children themselves that, you know, did a million things for the community. They didn't have the time to give, but they'd made the time. And I think that that's a huge piece of who I am because those people helped mold me into who I am. Mazel Tov, Jamie, on this honor. I can't think of anybody who's more deserving of it. You've been an inspiration to so many people in the community, outside the community. I just want to give you a bracha that you should continue to go Michael Chayel and let your inspiration shed across the entire globe. Mazel Tov again. An opportunity like this is an opportunity to recognize, not just for everyone else, but for yourself. You know, what I do really matters. Not in the sense of, oh, I'm being recognized for it, but in the sense of there are so many people who appreciate it and who it's meaningful to. Jamie, may your hard work, um, may your May your growth, may your positive energy, may it continue to um, enable you to become the best you and enable you to give back to the community like no one else can. So, Mazel Tov to everyone. 
Jamie is someone who is always working on herself, both religiously, per uh, personally. She's always doing whatever she can to better herself, and she truly makes me want to be a better person and a better Jew each and every day of my life. I get so excited to go back home to Memphis to see her and all of her little kids. And I am so proud of you, Jamie. There is no one that deserves to represent our class more than you. We love you so much. Mazel Tov. Congrats, Jamie, on the amazing award. Congrats, Jamie, on your award. Mazel Tov, Mommy! Uh, so I just want to say thank you for, you know, being recognized this evening and for really everything that the school has done for me and for my family, both my parents, my grandparents, and my children. Um, it's really meaningful to be a part of this community and to be honored this evening. Really lucky to uh, to have uh, each of these alumni featured in celebrating the greatness of uh, contribution to our school. My blessing to the school would be not only that it continued to grow, that it continued to flourish, but that it continued to be and serve as that backbone, that place where everyone comes together for the community uh, for years and years to come. I wish all of the honorees Hatzlacha, like we say in Hebrew, kol kavod. Each one of you with such a special part of the extended Margolin Hebrew Academy family and to see all of you being honored this evening uh, for what each of you gave and continues to give to the MHA family is really quite special. God willing, the MHA, the entire Memphis Jewish community will continue to go from strength to strength, from chayil to chayil, and continue educating and inspiring a generation to come. Mazel tov. People are all working toward a, a common goal of educating our children in the, in the path of Torah and mitzvot. Nestled in the heart of East Memphis is a gem, and it's the Marglin Hebrew Academy Feinstone Yeshiva of the South. It has been here for over 70 years, and its mission has never wavered or changed. It's here to educate the Jewish children of Memphis and to educate them to be Jews who have good Torah values, Jews who will be contributors to society wherever it is that they settle and whatever they end up doing. And that's a tremendous tribute to the school. And if you look at the honorees, and if you look at the alumni that we have produced, the honorees are the tip of the iceberg. If you look at all the things that the alumni of the school have accomplished, there's nothing but pride. And this is a gem, and I only hope that people will see it that way. <laughs>